Hello, this is John Purcell from QuantumLifetime.com and this is just a really simple tutorial on electric fields. So we've already looked at um, magnetic fields a bit and let's just go over the basics of electric fields before we go on to look at how these work in a electromagnetic wave. So it's been known since ancient times that um, if you take a piece of um, a kind of rock-like substance called amber, which is actually a fossilized tree resin, and you, you rub it with some kind of cloth, you can then pick up small feathers and things with, um, with that piece of amber. And of course the, the kind of modern equivalent of this experiment is just to take a pen try to draw a pen here. Um, if you take a pen and just rub it against your trousers or your, your shirt or whatever, you can then pick up small bits of paper with it. Now the um, if you type um, amber into Google Translate, you'll find that the, the name for amber in Greek is apparently electro. Or, or according to uh, some sources, um, we see electron. Uh, I, don't, I don't really understand Greek uh, grammar, but either way, our, our modern word for electricity comes from the Greek word for amber. And what's happening is we say that um, an electric field is, is somehow created by rubbing a pen or a piece of amber against cloth. And according to our modern understanding, the electric field arises because we have uh, something possessing what we call a charge. Um, and in fact, electric charge, we now believe, um, it comes in it comes in what we call positive and negative varieties. And a negative electric charge is carried by particles that we now call electrons. And atoms, the centre of atoms, have what we call a they have a positive electric charge which is carried by particles according to our understanding now called protons and when the when the pen or the amber is is rubbed against a piece of cloth some of the electrons basically get rubbed off or rubbed onto it possibly I'm not really sure leaving it let's say with a positive charge and then when you try to pick up a piece of paper with it, what happens is the paper becomes polarised. So electrons will move towards this positive charge and this side will acquire a negative charge because there are negatively charged electrons here. And in the region that the electrons left behind, we, then f we therefore have a positive charge. So this bit here of the paper, the nearest bit, is being attracted to the amber or the pen while this bit here is being repelled by it and the net result is that the paper kind of sticks to the pen usually kind of standing outwards like that. Now there's there's not really a huge amount of explanation in here by, by realising that we've got negative charge and positive charge and positive charges repel each other and negative, negative and positive charges attract we've at least put some system into this but again all we're really saying is that there are regions of space in which these mysterious invisible force fields exist and certain kinds of things are affected by those force fields and for the most part uh, when we're dealing with electric fields we're really thinking about electrons um, being affected by those force fields so it's uh, it's all very mysterious and as we'll see later on in these tutorials electrons themselves are, are kind of insubstantial and um, whether it really makes sense to think of them as particles is uh, is all a little bit um, hard to say and depends on what experiment you're doing. Now in the next tutorial we're going to look at the curious relationship between electric and magnetic fields and it is an extremely interesting relationship. So join me again then and until next time, keep it real.